Let's let's get the issue of the election out of the way. I mean, there's been a lot of uh, campaigning on both sides. How do you see, regardless of whichever uh, camp wins, we're, we're hearing it might be, of course, Modi and the BJP getting a majority. But I mean, how do your plans change depending on which government takes power? I think our plans, and so do uh, other industries. Plans don't change. It's just that we all hope that. You know, the momentum of growth that has happened in the last uh, four years in the Modi government, we hope that whichever government comes in play, you know, doesn't make drastic changes and so that industry and uh, economic development should not suffer. Right. We've seen amazing progress, a lot of uh, key initiatives put in place, progressive uh, regulations coming out, especially for our sector. Well, it's benefited. I mean, the Modi administration has benefited you. There was the demonetization a few years ago, which really led a strong push towards the digital economy. So that has helped fintech in India as a whole. But then there have also been some regulatory issues in the beginning part of this year. Lots of turmoil and I, it, the list of different changes is too long to list. But generally it worked to the disadvantage of the big e-commerce players such as Walmart with Flipkart as well as Amazon. Uh, how do you see the regulatory environment either staying the same or drastically changing if there's a government See, change. there will be, so regardless, even if it's the same government, there will be policy changes happening because you have to understand that in contrast to America or in contrast to China, India is still developing very fast. So a lot of, uh, you know, rules have not yet been written and they will get written over the course of time. And unfortunately, because a regulation is slightly behind, uh, you know, progress being made by companies and startups, sometimes it impacts us negatively and we just have to cope with it. You know, we can't be in a lawless land, so there have to be laws around, frameworks around how business has to be developed. Now, you're developing much more beyond just, of course, the mobile wallet and payments. You are going more into lending as well. Um, but that is a sector, if you use China as a model, they let the, the entrepreneurs develop the market and then they saw where they needed to do regulatory clampdown. Do you see the same thing transpiring in India? No, actually, the Indian regulator has been very smart there. And so we already have licenses for P2P lending companies, licenses for balance sheet lending companies, licenses for digital ins uh, insurance distribution, mutual funds. So all of those uh, licenses are already in place. The regulations are already in place. That what do you need to do if you want to be an OEM? What do you need to do if you want to be a distributor? And, you know, before the P2P or the regular lending market developed, the regulator had already come up with the regulations. So it's actually useful for companies like us because we don't have to, you know, wreck our brains and think about, okay, if we develop this, what happens? It's already set up. We can just follow one of the frameworks that works for us and get going. What's next for you? Because you have moved beyond just a mobile wallet, which really is dominated by Paytm, uh, the big rival. But you're going into P2P lending. You're going into wealth management with the acquisition of clear funds. You offer digital gold services, also insurance now as well. So I think the large change that has happened in the last two years is MobiQuick is no longer just a mobile wallet. MobiQuick is now a full service digital financial services platform. And the positioning in the mind of the Indian user that we are going after is that this app solves all your needs for financial services. Everything that you expected your bank to offer you but did not, it's all available here. So you want an instant loan, in two minutes you can get a loan. In two minutes, you can buy an insurance. In two minutes, you can invest your money in a liquid fund or in gold. All of these services have been launched, Steve, in the last one year, and we've made tremendous progress. As an example, we've given out loans to more than 400,000 Indians. But very quickly, I mean, you have to do your due diligence because there's not a lot of credit history and the slowing economy. I mean, the GDP is expected to grow at the slowest pace in six quarters. Are you concerned? I'm not concerned because in our sector, you know, the opportunity is so huge. India only has 3.7% people with insurance, 6% people with formal credit. So if we can mine our user base, our data properly, there is so much we can bring to the Indian user. Like it's a billion Indians with a bank account, but the number of credit cards in India is 44 million. We need to send it back to Haslinda. She's in New Delhi uh, covering the election results, but very quickly, IPO within three years still? IPO within three years, first company to turn profitable in this space in India. First fintech Indian company to be profitable. We will turn profitable this year. Okay, you heard it here first on Bloomberg.